All right, so today we're going to talk about arpeggios. What in the world is an arpeggio? An arpeggio means basically broken chord, meaning that you're playing the notes in the chord one note at a time. So rather than strumming like that, you're basically playing the notes one note at a time. All right, so let's talk about the left hand and also why arpeggios are useful. But I'm going to start you with the, the left hand and then we'll get into the right hand as usual. So I want you to take your middle finger and you're going to place it on the fifth fret of the fourth string. And I'm playing this with my thumb down here. And then this finger is just simply going to go over to the fourth fret of the third string. And I'm going to use my po uh, pointer finger there. And then our pinky is going to come to the seventh fret of the third string. So the three notes are... Now, what in the world am I doing here? So if you look at a G major chord and you were to break it down, it, it turns out that it consists of three notes. G, B, and D. So what I've done is I've played G, B, and D. All right? And that's all I've done throughout this video is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically show you all the different ways we can play G, B, D, and starting here and ending up all the way at the end of the fretboard and beyond. Okay? So what am I doing with my right hand? I'm going to go thumb, and then my pointer finger is going to hit the third string, and then I'm back to my thumb. So this is what we call, uh, a lot of banjo players call this the single string technique where it's thumb, index, thumb, index. Okay? Hopefully you're familiar with that. So here we go once again. G, B, and then D here. And then watch this. My whole hand is going to shift. And I'm going to come to the 8th fret of the 2nd string. And I'm going to be plucking that with my pointer finger. And then my middle finger is going to come to the ninth fret of the 1st string. And I'm going to use my middle finger here. So this was pointer and then middle down here. Pointer, middle. And hopefully you see that this is part of your G major chord. It's just I've changed the fingerings. And then we're going to reach with our 12th uh, fret of our 1st string and use our pinky there, and that is our D. So what we have so far, G, B, D. And then here's the same thing, G, B, D. It's just that we have went up an octave. And that's kind of the principle that you'll see behind my scales and my arpeggios, is we're not going to just stick with one area. We're literally going to learn the entire neck all at once, okay? So thumb, index, thumb down here, and then pointer, middle, and then here, I switch back to the index. So remember now, hopefully you've seen this in my other videos, but when we get to that top string, I'm going to be alternating these fingers instead of bringing my thumb all the way down. You know, what's up here, it just doesn't make any sense to go all the way down. So you'll see that I, I uh, alternate these fingers here. So I'll do that again. Once again, here comes a huge shift, all right? So watch this guy. Pointer finger is going to go to the 17th fret. And if you have trouble counting this, please don't start here and like try to count. Here's how you do this. You find the 12th fret, and then your next dot is the 15th, and then you come up two more, and then that is the 17th. That is our G note up to the highest octave, right? Now, I'm going to pluck that, and then I'm going to go up not to 19, but 21 with my ring finger, okay? So... And now I'm on my middle finger of my right hand, and then our, our pointer finger of our right hand, and then watch what happens here. I did some trickery there. That's what we call a harmonic, and a lot of people don't use these harmonics because they're so far off the neck, right? We uh, ran out banjo neck, but that didn't stop me. I want to keep going. So we got G, B, and then I take my pinky and I place it here. And I will be honest with you, sometimes you just have to fish for it. You know, I don't always hit it perfect. Uh, it's different on every banjo, so sometimes it can be kind of aggravating. G, B, and then D is our final destination, and that has taken us from this end of the neck all the way down here. I'm going to do this slow one more time, and then I'm going to talk about how in the world do you use this knowledge. Ready, go. hear that nice ring at the end. So that covers our G major chord. So basically the idea is why in the world do we want to learn all of this? So if your bandmates like strumming a G chord, you need to know what notes can you play. And these are what I call the strongest notes. They're the notes that are inside the chord. And by the way, you want to practice these up and down and backwards in all sorts of different directions. And we'll talk more about that. 
But the idea is if your friends play in a G chord, these will always sound good provided you stay in rhythm. And they kind of act as a visual aid for our future improvisations. And basically, I'm just kind of demonstrate here, we can start off really simple by just only playing these chord tones. Can start to add notes around the arpeggios and hopefully you can see that I still keep returning back to these strong notes basically a G major chord and a really easy way to improvise over it. All right, guys, so if, you, if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe because that's going to keep me pouring out more and more. I've been doing a lot here lately. And if you have any questions about the material, also comment underneath. Uh, if you have any struggles, hopefully not. But if you do, I'm here to help. I'm going to respond as quick as I can. Um, be sure to share the videos if you can. And also I'm going to ask one last thing. If you'll go to my website, which is in the description underneath, and subscribe to my email list, that's going to keep you updated when I post new blogs, new videos, and new products. But basically what's going to be coming is I'm going to show you how to play your arpeggios in your scales in different keys. And this is going to help you have more freedom on the fingerboard. All right, take care.